Welcome to Wet Clean, a digital SR sensor, a dust-free photography series video. I am Kurt Fargo. I will be your host and guide as we take a look at the wet cleaning of a digital SLR sensor. In this video, you're going to learn when, where, and how to actually clean a sensor, plus a lot more. By the time this video is over, you should be confident enough to complete a wet cleaning on your own. But before we get started, there are three points I do need to make. First, to be technically correct, you are never actually cleaning the sensor. What you are cleaning is a low pass filter that is attached to the front of the sensor. But to keep it simple, we're just going to refer to this as the sensor. Second, as you can tell, I'm not a Hollywood actor, but I am a certified photographic consultant along with a background as a camera repairman and 30 years experience in the camera repair industry. I will be able to show you firsthand how to clean your sensor. Third, if you don't have a steady hand or are not confident in your own abilities after viewing this video, please have a professional clean your camera. Remember, not everyone can ride a bicycle. We all have our own strengths and weaknesses. So just when should you clean your camera and how often? Let's use the old analogy, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. In other words, if you are not seeing dust spots on your images or you haven't found contaminants on your sensor, don't clean it. Some people will end up cleaning their sensors daily. Some will end up cleaning them manually. It all depends on the environment you're shooting in, how often you're changing your lenses, and if you're using a push-pull zoom lens, and much more. If you're planning on taking some important pictures, I would highly encourage you to do a sensor inspection prior to the shoot. I would never recommend cleaning a sensor by any method if you don't have the capability of performing a sensor inspection afterwards. When selecting a room or location to clean your sensor in, the cleaner the environment, the better. You don't need a commercial clean room, but on the other hand, you don't want to attempt this in a dusty environment either. This is where common sense comes into play. In most cases, this isn't a two minute task, but more like a 15 to 30 minute one. So you will want to choose a location where you won't be disturbed during this amount of time. You will get faster with experience. If you are fortunate or unfortunate enough to have young kids running around, try to make sure they won't be stirring up dust in the room. This goes for pets too. In many cases, the bathroom is one of the most dust-free environments in a house. Hey, and most have a built-in seat. Choose a workspace far away from heating and air conditioning vents. Better yet, turn them off if you can. You can also clean your sensor on location, but I would not recommend doing it outdoors. I would only do it on a location if I wasn't being rushed, I had a clean environment, and I had the capability of inspecting it afterwards. Now let's take a look at the tools we'll be using in this video. They are the rocket blower, eclipse, sensor swabs, and a sensor inspection device. We will be using the Giotto's brand rocket blower, which has been tested to be one of the best on the market for this task. No matter what method of sensor cleaning you use, a blower should always be used first. We do not recommend the use of canned air on the sensor as no canned air is contaminant free. The propellants within canned air can make a real mess of your sensor. The sensor swab is a tool that will actually be touching the sensor. The sensor swabs do come in three different sizes depending on the size of the sensor in your camera. These sizes are type 2 which are for all 1.6 and 1.5x sensors. This happens to encompass the majority of the cameras out there. Type 3 swabs are for cameras with full frame sensors. And Type 1 swabs, these are for the cameras with 1.3x sensors. Eclipse is a cleaning solution that we will be applying to the sensor swabs to do the actual cleaning. It is pure methanol that has been highly refined and filtered. Eclipse has a brother called Eclipse E2, which is used on cameras whose sensors are tin oxide coated. To find out what chemical and size swab is right for your specific camera, visit Photographic Solutions site at www.photosol.com. Photographic Solutions offers a guarantee that you will not damage your sensor if you use their products and follow their instructions. As a side note, this video follows their instructions. For inspecting the sensor, we'll be using a 5X sensor scope by Delkin. This is the first commercially available sensor inspection device designed for the consumer use. Yes, you can shoot test images to inspect your sensor, but using a sensor inspection device will immensely cut down the overall time needed to clean your sensor, and it also allows you to clean your sensor while on location. Okay, let's get started. Assuming that we've already seen dust spots on the images, 
or if we've inspected the sensor and found contaminants on it, we are ready to start the cleaning process. The first step is to put the camera into its cleaning mode. We will place the camera face down on our work surface, enter the menu system. In Canon cameras, you will find this option listed as sensor cleaning. Nikon calls this mirror lockup. Please refer to your owner's manual for specific instructions for your make and model. In some older cameras, you're required to use an AC power supply just to be able to access the sensor cleaning mode. There are two reasons to not attempt to clean your sensor using bulb or long shutter speed. These are, when using bulb or long shutter speed, the sensor is powered up, which in turn produces a static charge on the surface. This makes it very hard to clean. And second, being that if the shutter closes on your sensor cleaning device, you will end up with a blown shutter and a very expensive repair bill. Now we're ready to actually start the cleaning. As I said before, the first step is we'll be using the blower. Let's hold the camera facing down, not putting the blower into the camera, but we'll start blowing. I use a sweeping motion to help the air reach all areas of the sensor. I will do this multiple times. The main purpose of using the blower is to remove the big chunks, which keeps them from being dragged across the sensor by the sensor swab. Yes, the blower on its own is a great cleaning tool, but air alone will not remove the dust that has been held on by moisture or pollen, nor will it remove stray lubricants that found their way onto the sensor. I'm now ready to check the results of my blowing on the sensor. Using my sensor scope, I will be able to see the surface of the sensor and how successful the blower was on its own. If I got lucky, my sensor will be clean, but in most cases, I'm not that lucky. Well, it sure is a lot better, but not perfect yet. So now we need to do a wet cleaning. Keeping my camera facing down while I prepare sensor swab with Eclipse, I will cut the bag containing the swab open with a pair of scissors. Let's make sure that we don't touch the tip of the swab with our fingers, as this will be touching the sensor. And since this is the first swab of the cleaning, I will use three drops right on the tip. No need to put this chemical on both sides as it will flow to the other side on its own. If I end up needing additional swabs to complete this task, I would use only two drops on each additional swab. Without delay, I'm going to swab the camera. I will start on one side and go across then come back the other direction without lifting the swab from the surface of the sensor, like this. I quite often get asked as to what is the correct amount of pressure to use. I have this graphic representation to share with you that I hope will help answer the question for you. I'm going to use a rocket blower to blow off the sensor before I check my swabbing results. I use the same technique as I did the first time. I'm now ready to inspect the sensor. Using my sensor scope, I'm going to look for contaminants, smears, or any other foreign objects. Wow, I got lucky this time and only had to use one swab. In most cases, you will need to repeat your swabbing step multiple times using a brand new swab each time. You don't want to reuse the swab as that would be dragging the contaminants that you've already picked up back across the sensor and that isn't a good idea. The more experience you get, the faster you will get. I'm taking my camera out of the cleaning mode and now I'm ready to go shoot. Yes, it's really that easy. Remember that the best photography is always dust-free photography. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.